Hello everybody and welcome to Cousin Bait, blogging to find your family. I hope you all can hear me. Somebody could type in that little uh, chat room if they can hear me, that would be helpful. We'll know we can go on. All right, I see that you can. I'll keep that little window up in my other monitor. So if you have questions or for some reason something's not clear, feel free to ask. My name is Ann Mitchell. I write the Ask Ancestry and column, and I do a few other things around Ancestry.com. And one of them is these live stream presentations. I know a lot of you have came to them last year, and we greatly appreciate it. Myself, Krista, and Juliana love doing these presentations. So the new year is upon us. And now is the time to make all those genealogy resolutions. I'm guessing you made a few. You're going to write more, you're going to find this person, you're gonna do that. Well, here's something that you may wanna to add to your list, and that's to start a blog. This can be a great thing to do for two reasons. One, you can set up what we call cousin bait, which will help you find other relatives that maybe you didn't know anything about. And two, it will help you get all your ideas down and maybe organize them and maybe help you sort through some problems that you have and maybe break down a few brick walls. So let's get started. What is Cousin Bay? Well, unless you come from a long line of only children in every branch of your tree, and I don't think that exists, you probably have quite a few distant cousins out there. Now, they may not be people that you're going to correspond with or hang out with at Christmas, but they may be people who know something of three generations back, four generations back, five generations back, that may help you as you build your family tree. How do you find them? This is the trick. How do you catch them? And how do you reel them in to find out what they know? Because that's what you're after, right? Sounds sort of mercenary, but you wanna know what they know. Do they have information that you don't have? Do you have information they don't have? If you share and have a meeting of the minds, Maybe you'll be smarter and maybe you'll break down those brick walls. Now, if you have an ancestry member tree, you can find your distant or not so distant cousins through Shaky Leaves and Member Connect. Because if you have people researching the same tree, you know, and you do uh, member or hints on member trees, then you, then you can find these people. But we all know not everybody corresponds and whatnot. And there may be other people out there. The internet is a huge place and not everybody has a public tree on ancestry. So how do you find these people? Well, there's usually more than one way to solve a problem as we know, and if you keep doing the same thing, you're gonna find the same answers. So here's something different. Have you thought about blogging? You don't have to be a great writer. Maybe even your sentence structure and grammar's not great. You don't have to know anything about how to set up a web page. You can do all these things for free. Just get your thoughts out there. Just get your information out there. Creating pages and blog posts about your ancestors might lead you to cousins you didn't know about. In fact, it may not be cousins. I've, had, I've blogged for quite some time and uh, on my uh, blog site, Finding Forgotten Stories, and I've posted about my dad and my, his grandparents and whatnot. And he was, went to high school in grade school in Lexington, Virginia. And over Christmas break, I was contacted by a lovely lady named Martha Spencer. She had gone to high school with my father and she had high school yearbooks. Now my father passed away a couple years ago and we don't have his high school yearbooks. So these pages were just awesome to me. So she was so kind and she scanned these pages in and she emailed them to me. And you know, I saw him in library club, which seemed odd to me, and in, on his football team. And I noticed that he had been chosen as having the prettiest eyes. You can only imagine what this meant. And this was just out of the blue. But the reason I got this is because I had the blog out there. I had posted information about him and someone had responded. You don't know how long it will take. It could take a day, it could take 10 years, but you may find out something. All right, so how do people find a blog page that you might write? And this is important because you need to know what information to put in the blog post so people can find it. So think about a Google search. 
I'm assuming that a lot of you have done uh, Google searches on your ancestors. And if you haven't, I suggest that you do. And I suggest that you do them often. In fact, you could set up an alert on this. Or you can do it in Bing or whatever your favorite search engine is. So let's say I'm looking for my great-grandmother, yeah, great Laura Cecile Donald. Actually, it should be Laura Cecile Donald Gillespie. She lived in Rockbridge, Virginia, and I throw in the word genealogy because it helps organize the post. It brings up the more relevant ones. Now, when somebody types in a query like this, what I want is I would like my page to be on this list. So they will click on this and find that person. So those are the words that I need to appear in the title of my blog post and my actual blog post. This is going to help you find who you're looking for because you want them to go find your page or your blog post. A lot of blogs will actually allow you to keep pages and not just a uh, blog post. So you may want to do one or the other. All right. So you'll see in this particular one, I've got it titled Laura Cecile Donald. 1877 through 1964, right? So somebody could look at that and go, that's probably the person I'm looking for. And they're probably going to read more. And who knows, maybe they'll reach out to me. You need to always have a way in your blog for people to email you. So how do you start a blog? Uh, there's all sorts of different platforms on how you can start a blog. Blogger and WordPress have free platforms that you can use. Now I personally use WordPress and you can use a free version of that. And you can also use a... Uh, paid version of that. I suggest you do not spend money on anything until you know you're actually going to do this. Uh, but let's look at Blogger. That's a fairly easy one. It's associated with Google and if you have a Gmail account, so it'll be fairly easy. But you know, all of these, there are tutorials on the web. There's all sorts of things you can do to figure out how to do it. All right, so let's start on blogger.com. Real quickly, let me run you through some steps. And I'll po post a link to the PDF of this file. And you can also send me email and I can maybe help you out. So if you go to blogger.com and you already have a Gmail account, you'll already be logged in. If not, it'll ask you to sign in. You can create a blog. Like it says, it's free. Free is good. So I'm going to create a new blog. I'm going to entitle this one Cousin Bait for Genealogist. Well, isn't that clever? Now the title of your blog you can change, but the URL for your blog you cannot. You have to make it fairly permanent, all right? This is what you're stuck with. So don't just do something silly. You know, put some thought into it. I'm going to call this Cousin Bait for Genealogist. And then I, so I type that in. I can choose a template. And you can change your templates afterwards. And once you get this started, you know, you're going to, well, if you're like me, you're going to want to go through the thing where you try all the different ones and see what you like. Then you can create your blog. I mean, it really is just that simple. All right, you will now have a blog. To find you, people need to know who you are. So if you look over here in this upper right-hand corner where it says unknown, for some reason mine didn't have all my information. So I'm going to click on that, and I get this, and I'm going to go to account settings, and then I'm over here. All right? So I need to fill in more information. So I'm going to click on edit profile so I can make sure that people can find me and they have all the information so they feel comfortable contacting me. I want to share my profile because I want people to contact me. I'm not going to show my email address because I'm trying to avoid spammers, but I will allow, um, there will be ways to contact me through this. Show my blogs. If I have multiple blogs, it will list them all. Show the sites I follow. If you're going to follow other genealogy blogs, it's nice to show sites that you follow. It's good advertisement for everybody. Your username, your email address. I need to change my display name. Unknown is not very inviting. So I'll type in Ann Gillespie Mitchell on there. A lot of women use their maiden name so people can find them who are in their family tree. Then if you want to, you can upload a profile photo. And then you will have a blog. And then, it, so if I click up here, you'll see I have a little picture here. It's got my name in here and people can contact me. So it's awesome. Or maybe not. All right, so I'm going to write my first blog post up here at the top. See, you don't have to know HTML. You don't have to know anything. Let's start baiting cousins. And then, you know, some silliness. And usually for your introductory post, you're just writing whatever. I'm going to create this blog to illustrate how to set up a new blog so people can post about their families as cousin bait to hopefully find other distant cousins. Let's get started. 
Now you'll notice all the links up here, you can change your font size, your font type, bold, italics, underline, strike through, colors, don't make those ugly. Nobody wants to read red caps. It's ugly. You can throw in links, photos, videos. All right, I forget what that one is. Uh, this will make it either left justified, right justified. I mean, it's all in here, right? Numbered list, dotted list. Do a little spell check, because if you're like me, you can't spell. And then you can save it as you go. You can preview it before you publish it. And then you can publish. It's really all there. It's just sort of what they call WYSIWYG. You know, you type it in and it's there. So what do you blog about? It's your blog. You can blog about any old thing that pops into your head. Now, if you've created this one about genealogy, I would specify, I would suggest that you talk about genealogy, all right? I don't talk about my dogs in my genealogy blog. It just doesn't seem like it really fits, even though I love my dogs. Or I don't talk about my husband. Love him too, but I don't talk about him. So if you, but what you, and what you're after here is to create the cousin bait, right? You want to create poster pages that contain information people search on. Remember back when I did the Google search? People search for names, or they may put in multiple names. They may put in locations. They may put in dates. What do you, think about what you type in when you search for your ancestors. First name, last name, dates spouse, parents, children, locations, and phrases such as genealogy or family history. And if things are in the title, they're more likely to show up in Google. So if I'm going to create a cousin bait page for my great granny Laura, I might title it something like The Genealogy of Laura Cecile Donald Gillespie of Rockbridge, Virginia, 1877 through 1964. That is a long title, but it tells you what I'm going to write about, doesn't it? Don't write short titles. They're boring, they're not informative, they don't catch the eye, they don't make people want to go in and read it, all right? Make it long, draw people in. The title of your blog post is meant to draw people in. All right, then I can just start typing away. You know, and just type whatever comes to your head and then go back and add it to it. This is an example of a cousin bait paint. If I publish what I know about my great grandmother, then maybe I can find other relatives who know something I do not can upload photos if you have them. Photos, if you have them, make the page more interesting. People love visuals. Also, a lot of people use Pinterest. And if you have a really cool photo on here, people will pin it to their Pinterest boards. One of the things that you wanna make sure you do if you upload photos is make sure you caption them. A good caption for this one would be something like Great Granny Laura from 1950, from Cousin Bait, for <coughs> cousin bait for genealogists. That way, if somebody were to see it someone else, they'd know where it came from. <coughs> now, if you're one of those people who does not like to share things with other people and is a, does not, never, ever, ever wants to see any photo or piece of information that you have posted elsewhere, not a good idea for you. But if you really just don't care and if you're really just looking for the information to further your genealogy, this is a must. You want to do this. <coughs> Sorry about that. So what do you talk about? You talk about what you know. You talk about what you don't know. Say, you know, I know when she got married, but I don't know who her parents are. They, I think they might be so-and-so, but I really don't know. People read that stuff and they go, have you thought about this? Talk about, um, I did a post on my grandfather and I got a uh, picture of the high school I thought he went to. A couple of people wrote back and said, nope, he did not go to that high school because that was not the high school back in the, I guess it would have been the 20s. <coughs> so I learned something, right? I hadn't really thought about it. And if I had, I would have known ahead of time, but I didn't. And people gave me information that I found useful. All right. You can cite your sources or include links to them. You can link to Ancestry.com images and sources. You can make little snapshots of a census and put it in there. That can be your picture. We're fine with that. Go ahead and do that. It's always nice to link back so people can find it, but you can do that. That's called fair use. Laura Cecile Donald was born, so I can put this information in here. I'm putting when she was born, where she was born. She was the youngest daughter of James Calvin Donald and Elizabeth Jane Wallace. She married Wyatt Paul, I have a question mark there, in 1894 in Lexington, Virginia. 
and why it was the son of Mary, Jeremiah and Mary Gillespie Gillespie. Usually you put maiden names and sentences like this in parentheses. They were first cousins. Don't judge my family tree twist. She and Wyatt had 10 children. Now, you would probably list all 10 children. She died August 1964. Now, don't put information about living people up here without their permission. That's not very nice. Um, people who have passed on, it's okay. And people don't own other people. They don't own their histories. They don't own the past. You may publish these things. Think, though. If you have an aunt who recently died and she had three children out of wedlock, you know, if it's going to hurt people, if you publish that information, don't do it, right? It's a lot easier when you go three or four generations back to publish the scandal. So think before you publish. Once it's out there, it's out there. It's never coming back. All right, now what? Now you wait. This is the hard part. You publish this stuff, you keep writing about what you know, you keep writing about what you find, and it can be anything. They can be short. You can say, look, I found this great article over here. Point to somebody else's page. People love that. Um, go to geniabloggers.com. They give you things that you can talk about. You know, it's like Tombstone, Tombstone Tuesday. People post pictures of tombstones. But if you put your blog out here and you maintain it and you keep writing, you never know who might write to you. Just recently, again, over Christmas, I had somebody in my uh, Snavely line who I've been working on, and she's about six generations back, but we share a common ancestor, and now we're comparing notes. What does she know? What do I know? How do we put that together? You never know who you're going to meet, and this is the best way to meet them because you're not going to run into them on the street and know that they're your cousins. Amy Coffin, who writes the Weed Tree Genealogy blog, has posted a, a couple of really, really good uh, articles on this. The first one was How to Write a Cousin Bait Genealogy blog post. And the URL is right there. And, uh, and I will put a link to this PDF so you can find these later because I know how hard it is to copy these down. And then she has, not long after that, why I blog Cousin Bait Reels and the big one where she talks about one of her successes. And then you can find this in PDF form on my blog and my how-to videos. And I'll put that link up in the discussion window here in one second. But I suggest that give it a try. It doesn't cost you anything. You can do this completely for free. It might be fun. Who knows? Maybe you'll find that this is just entertaining for you and helps you think through things. But you never know what you might find. And it's a great way to get information out there. Not just in names and dates and in tree format, but in story format. Have you ever looked at a family tree? They're really boring. Family trees are boring to look at. Stories are interesting to read. If you can transform your family into stories, it'll be more interesting and people will be more interested in what you do. All right, so does anybody have any questions while I type up this URL for you guys? I'm not seeing any. It's the new year. I think everybody is still a little fuzzy. Okay, Sandy, you do? And there's the URL. Also, uh, if there are questions on how to do this, um, you can, I can uh, post different things on the Cousin Bait for Genealogist blog. Um, that one is, let's see, Cousin Bait for Genealogists blogspot.com. That's a good question. How often should one blog? You should blog on a regular basis. And what I mean by that, you know, tell yourself, I'm going to blog once a week. I'm going to blog twice a week. You know, just set yourself a schedule. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. That's the hardest part. Once you get out of the habit, it's, it gets harder. So what I would do is say, I'm going to blog twice a week. 
you know, and pick just random topics. Even if you just write a paragraph, that's fine. The more you do it, the easier it'll become and the more fun it will do. Some people blog once a day. I don't blog as much on the weekends because I find I don't get as many uh, uh, hits on the weekends. People, for some reason, seem to do this more at work. Um, somebody said, do you title your blog with a catchy phrase to get attention? Uh, yeah, you can do that. Uh, if you go to, let's see here. HTTP, bloggers.com. Uh, you can not only look at what a lot of other people name their blogs, but you can also register your blog and that will help drive traffic to you so more people look at it. Um, I would not set up a blog for each family member. I would uh, set up different maybe pages for each family member. Uh, there's just too many blogs to maintain. Somebody said, once you create a blog, do you need to do anything else to get it noted by search engines? No, you do not. Uh, as long as you keep publishing, especially on the Google or WordPress platform, they will eventually find them and pick them up. Um, are you going to cover WordPress? I did not cover it in here. Uh, if you like, I can write up instructions on how to start a WordPress blog and I can post them in Cousin Bait for Genealogist or I can post it on Ask Ancestry and I actually post it in both places. So I'll try and get that done in the next day or two. Let's see, I missed part of the very beginning. Better to use Google profile or just blogger profile? You can use either. It's up to you. You know, whichever makes you comfortable. I prefer WordPress just because that was the one I started with. It's amazing, however, what you start with uh, um, is what you're most comfortable with. I also actually have, I pay for my blog because I don't like ads on it and because I blog quite a bit. Uh, Becky makes a good point. There are a lot of tutorials online how to create a WordPress blog, also a blogger blog. Um, and Blogger is probably a little bit easier than WordPress, but if you know you feel fairly comfortable on a computer, WordPress will seem pretty easy to you. Ah, how do you use labels or tags in a post? That's a really good question. I am going to have to do another session, I have a feeling. Uh, tags, um, I always put locations and names as tags. Um, you know, and then if I'm talking about World War II, I'll put World War II in there. Um, I'm going for certification. Uh, being a certified genealogist, so if I write post on certification, I'll put that as a tag. Um, look at what other people do. One of the best ways to learn how to do anything is to look at examples. So if you look at other people's examples, that'll give you an idea of what to do. What about having a Facebook group to blog? Wait a minute. I missed it. Hold on. What about having a Facebook group to blog, if it's an open group, everything you post goes out on Google. Um, you can do that. That's one way to do it. I have a uh, Facebook page that's associated with my blog. I'm not sure this question you're asking. I don't repost the same information, but I do make notes there when I post to my blog, and I also mention other people's blogs because I think it's sort of um, fun to find really good blog posts out there. And... Um, and talk about what they're doing. If you have a blog and you would like me to take a look at it, I'd be happy to do that and include it in my list of blogs that I look at. Uh, just simply send email to ask at ancestry.com, put cousin bait in the title, and then tell me that you want me to look at your blog. Do you have any examples of blog postings that are good stories versus just names and dates? I do. Um, what's the best way to get this information out? Um, let me think about that and I'll try and post some stuff in, um, on my Ask Ancestry and column. If you go to the uh, Sticky Note Tumblr blog for Ancestry, I'll, I'll try and post some of those in there with some of those examples. And again, if you don't see it or you don't know where to look, send mail to ask at ancestry.com put cousin bait in the title so I know you were looking at this presentation and I can try and get your question answered that way. If you don't put cousin bait in the title, I won't know you're talking about this presentation. You are all for ask and yes. Hold on one second, let me get it. It's a long one. Do 
All right, that is the link to my column on the Tumblr blog. Richard, that was a really good story about how they uh, found you and you got the DNA test. That's a great story. Are there any copyright issues bloggers should be concerned with? Don't steal other people's stuff. <laughs> That's really, really bad. Um, really, really bad. Write your own stuff. You know, it's just like anything else you write. Um, how can... Um, there's all, I have a great link that I just posted on my own Facebook page, and I can post it in the Ask Ancestry um, and column as well. Uh, Elizabeth Schoen Mills talks about plagiarism and copyright, and it, if you follow those rules, you'll be fine. How can you make sure photos will be sourced correctly if someone uses it from your blog? You can't always make sure. You could uh, write the source out for them, and a lot of people put a source at the end of their blog post and, or um, a source at the end of their photo, and I can also post that kind of stuff. I will try and schedule, I think we're pretty booked through January, but I will definitely try and schedule another one of these in February and we can talk about some of these things, but I'll also write about them and ask Ancestry Ann. Yes, the legal genealogist, Judy Russell, addresses copyright. She's brilliant. She's a lawyer and a CG, which stands for Certified Genealogist. She is really, really good. You will be smarter every time you read her column. Okay. How do you get the word out that you have a blog? Uh, you can put it on your Facebook page. You can send an email to your friends. Um, you know, one thing that I have found is I read other people's blogs. If you find um, a blog posting that you like, you know, leave them a message. Say, great blog posting. And, you know, I really liked how you talked about blah, 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 whatever it is. I mean, I always try and, you know, let people know I was there and I enjoyed what they wrote. And it, a lot of times it will allow you to leave a URL back to your blog. That's a great way people see that. And you'd be amazed at the number of times people click back through there. Also, if people start reading your blog, um, they'll list the blogs down the side. And, uh, you know, put blogs you like on your page and usually they'll return the favor. It just takes time. But you'll get there. Plus, you know, people, the best people go through and search, and that's how they find your blog. Yep, if you're on Facebook genealogy groups, you can post your blog link there. That's also a good idea. Uh, Sandy, I'm not sure what your question was. All right, guys, um, I'm going to call this one. Uh, I will send me an email if you have other questions, and I will continue to post. Thank you so much for joining me today.